it's just it's a really incredible feeling to know that yeah you're actually hands-on with space and i feel like a lot of people still don't really understand that there's a space industry in scotland and that there's amazing opportunities here so what's that journey been like for you from 2015 to now what how have you found that i mean it's been it feels like a blur it's been an incredible incredible growth um it's been kind of almost humbling i would say to be along for the ride um, but no, you're, you're absolutely right that people don't realize, and we're sitting here in Sky Park, uh, they don't realize 150 spacecraft have been built, you know, right by the, the Clydeway. Um, so no, it's, it's been absolutely incredible. And, you know, the, the local community and the government and academic institutions have been super, super critical part of that. You know, we want to use data from space to improve life on Earth, um, in kind of the, the shortest expression of it. Um, and to, you know, your point, it was all about taking things that were being done. And, you know, that's generally where disruption comes from. It's not from this eureka moment, this brand new technology. It's usually once that technology has been kind of baked in a little bit and it's combined with other things. So we just wanted to ride that wave. Um, and we expected to when we came to Scotland. And we were still a data company at that point. Um, but what we found was the, the industry was still not able to innovate at quite the speed that we thought it was capable of. Um, and we saw it was going to be possible with the exponentially improving technology that was coming in. So it was, yeah, you know, late 2015 that we made the choice to go vertical and say we're going to build our own satellites. At that time, we were already deploying our own ground network and doing all of our own operations. But that was, this is kind of the last, yeah, we're going to do the whole thing ourselves. And the rest was, the rest was history. And people still think of satellites as these huge, enormous pieces of kit, but they're not, are they? No, I mean, we have people come in, we give them a model and they say, okay, but how big is the real thing? And we say, no, that is, so it's a loaf of bread. It's, it's very small, but it's incredible to think of what you can now do uh, with that. And that's when, when people talk about the disruption that's happening in the space industry right now, there's a lot of talk around cost of launch coming down, which is, you know, tens of percent um, and things getting smaller. But what is most exciting to us is what you can do, you know, making more out of less. Um, and that's where, you know, every, you know, two to five years, it's a little bit fuzzy in the different areas, but there's a 10x improvement in the capability. So it's an absolutely incredible pace of innovation which is happening in the industry right now. And then the people that were, you know, the team that we have, they're not you know, space engineers per se, they're not trained to be space qualified engineers. They're normal engineers, electrical, mechanical, software, hardware, and are just applying that, their experience and skills into an environment which happens to be uh, for satellites that are going into space. So it really brings it back down to this is an accessible and absolutely an area that anybody can become involved in. Um, and whilst the skills you do, you develop over the course of your journey may become quite specific, they're not honed at that level at the beginning. Um, and so it's great to bring people around and really let them see that, you know, you can just go around and see all the different parts. And then you've got a satellite which ultimately then gets launched into, into space. At Spire, you know, when, when you join the company, you get on a list and when your, when your name comes up, you get to name the next satellite. So it's oh, actually in the cool. NORAD register. So mine's still up there and it's still working. What did you um, call it? Uh, I was very angry. I called it Joel. Very <laughs> Why no? That's what I would do. <laughs> no, but some of the names are hilarious. Yes. No, that's a whole other story in itself. But I remember sitting on top of this, you know, mountain and, and realizing, oh, my satellite's actually you know, above. And sitting there and think there's this object in outer space, 500 kilometers above, that I held in my hands like a couple months ago. 